at the outset, uh, I thank the organizers and congratulate them for uh, having such a wonderful concept uh, for the conference, uh, which is very different from the usual ones. Uh, the influence of uh, technology we see in every aspect of our lives and uh, medical fraternity is not uh, uh, different. Transplant being the most uh, uh, complex undertaking on the human body uh, is influenced by different aspects of the technology right from the beginning of the identification of the donor, communicating and retrieving organs, uh, uh, allocating it to the right person and transporting organs from one place to another one. This all includes various aspects of the uh, organs. Even in the living donor liver transplant to identify the right donors and uh, going through the complex aspects of the donor surgery, the uh, influence of uh, technology we can see. Now, uh, after all this, uh, even the transplant itself and the management of the overall care of the patient is influenced by various equipments which has made the uh, uh, transplant very safe these days. So, what I'm going to talk and concentrate on the, this various aspects which has made the life of the doctor easy and the transplant transplant process safe. Now, we all have, uh, uh, as, as a general uh, practitioner, you may be having patients in your outpatient, and many times the patient look more or less the same. And how do you identify whether the patient is uh, uh, improving or the deteriorating? Because patient may look better on one aspect of the uh, clinical uh, data while the patient is slightly worse. But when you use such uh, calculators, which is at your fingertips on your mobile, it makes very easy to compare their clinical status compared to their previous visit and then you identify that what is happening to the patient. So the normal male score uses three clinical parameters which is the bilirubin, international uh, ratio and uh, uh, creatinine and the normal is six. When it reaches 12, you uh, can tell patient that you are on the verge of needing transplant and you start preparing for transplant. When the male score becomes 15, the patient needs transplant and as the male score keep worsening, the patient condition is worsening and the transplant is a uh, imminent need. Then comes the registry. Whenever the, there are quite a few patients waiting for transplant, their names have to be registered and the allocation of the organs has to be in a very transparent form. And for this, this kind of online registry is very important. Our government is trying to make it nationwide. And this NOTO is the national body which has been established. It will have a regional uh, centers for Western part. It is in Bombay. And then there is SOTO, that is a state level body. Now what this does is uh, they have online uh, various forms which every center has to fill up for various uh, uh, aspects of registration and when the organs are available they are allocated according to this and all the data is upgraded. So not only that you know what is happening in different centers but you also know the transparency and uh, all the uh, uh, wrongdoings can be prevented. Uh, uh, it, it also identifies the patient on a dire need of the uh, super urgent uh, need of the organ and that patient can be prioritized and can be offered organ and now this all can be done on a uh, online basis. Now, when you have so many people involved in the care of a patient, they are located in various hospitals, in various uh, uh, cities, and within, within hospitals, some are at home, some are in the hospitals, in various departments, and same information need to be shared with so many people at any given point in time. In uh, era before the smartphones or before things like, uh, very simple things like WhatsApp, the same phone call needed to be done to so many people. Phones used to be engaged and people used to keep calling for small, small things. And there used to be a significant communication gap. And just with the availability of things like WhatsApp, where a group is made, all the stakeholders are on one page, all the decisions are discussed there, all the reports are uploaded there. So everybody is on the same page, everybody is talking to the same language, everybody is aware of what is communicated to the patient. Uh, 
patient's relatives, what is the condition of the patient, and this makes it so easy, so safe, and makes everybody's lives very easy. Even the paramedics and the nurses who are supposed to inform all this information to the uh, all the team members, their life has become very easy. That once you upload the information, let people look at it at their own time, at own convenience, give their suggestions, and there is only one captain who decides exactly what needs to be done, what is the logic, and everybody has uh, that information, and that has made the life very easy. Another very important thing which has emerged over the last couple of years is a concept of green corridor. Now more and more organs are being transported from one hospital to another hospital and in states, we, we in Gujarat still don't have organ sharing system but in many states, especially in south, have a system of sharing half of their solid organs to another hospital. So when organs are transported from one hospital to another hospital, it's very important that the condition of the organ is taken care of, uh, the time is kept to the bed minimum to have the best outcome from those organs and for this this new concept has arrived which is known as green corridor so green corridor is referred to a route which is demarcated and cleared out for the uh, transportation of the harvested organs most organs needs uh, to be uh, transported in few hours and implanted as soon as possible the objective of this whole concept is to ensure that the transit time is kept to the minimum the organs condition is kept in best possible situation and organs reaches to, the, uh, reaches to the transplant hospital in the shortest possible time without affecting the traffic and the overall uh, life of the city or the air traffic uh, to bare minimum. When the organs are uh, to be retrieved, even the team need to reach to the donor hospital fast and for that also this is often used and usually it is the team of uh, doctors and the paramedics who travel. First time this was used in 2008 in Chennai where one uh, organ was transported to another one. The organs were all, see there are no ideal donor organs. All organs are marginal in one or the other way and hence this duration of the preservation time has to be kept to the minimum and this is the whole concept behind this. And the name Green Corridor was given in 2014 where uh, organ was transported from one hospital to another in the half of the usual time. And when the Green Corridor is used, usually the donor hospital, recipient hospital, police departments, airport authorities, ambulance services, and if there are NGOs or the government registry bodies are involved, they all have to work in synchrony. And here also, all these communication tools on or your smartphone makes it very, very easy. It is very important that all these stakeholders respond in real time without any waste in time and to make the process of transport easy. Even recently, the Surat has come up very well in this aspect. The Surat has transported so many organs recently to Indore and uh, Bombay and some part of the uh, Gujarat also. So once the ambulance is on the road, the driver has to call only the um, uh, traffic police uh, control area, then uh, who then in line uh, informs all the uh, local areas who, who help them clear the traffic. It's very important that the traffic is not kept to hold for very long time unnecessarily. So these all are done in a very synchronic uh, manner and uh, uh, it is very effective. So uh, there are states where uh, uh, police department and the various health authorities are having this uh, uh, campaign of uh, make way for the ambulance. Even we see a lot of times uh, day to day that a lot of uh, drivers don't know what to do. They want to give way to the ambulance, whether to stop or to go to the side or go to the uh, central side. I mean, how, how do you want, uh, should react? Even they don't have the idea. So this all awareness is also being created by such campaigns. So when uh, such organs are transported, uh, not only the road uh, services or the uh, ambulances or the specially dedicated vehicles, but even the small aircrafts are also uh, used. And for that, uh, many times the airport authorities give you uh, the priority ahead of the commercial airlines. Before we started transplant program at Apollo, we transported few organs to Delhi. And on one or two occasions, the delay 
by the commercial airline was so much that by the time the organs reached Delhi, they were not usable. And it was a complete waste of uh, organ and the possibility of benefiting the life. But with the help of this uh, green corridor, such uh, situations are now going to be the history. And this is how uh, uh, police helps you to clear the uh, path for the ambulance because you don't want accident happening because of the very uh, uh, high speed of the ambulance. Recently in Bangalore, the organs have been transplanted within city by air just to avoid traffic. So what we have been listening for many years about the West is now becoming their reality in our own country. The next influence of the technology in living donor liver transplant is identification of uh, the donor. When the living donor liver transplant is done, liver is cut into two. It is very important. The enough liver is given to the uh, patient, but at the same time enough liver is left behind in the donor because there are no two kidney, uh, two livers like two kidneys. So to decide exactly how much liver to be removed, how, where to cut and exactly what are you are going to come across for that same special softwares are used which gives you the three dimensional effect and when all these uh, road maps are available with you the surgery becomes very safe and the planning is very accurate. All the CT scans is three dimensional, but uh, with the special softwares, you get the images of the various vessels in two dimensional, and you know exactly the size of the vessels, distance between the vessels, and all these uh, uh, things make it very important and uh, very uh, easy uh, for doing the surgery, and there are no surprises at the time of surgery. And now before I conclude, I'll just go through a few uh, equipments which are used for transplant, which has uh, significantly influenced the overall care and the ease and the life of a surgeon and the whole team. This is the uh, CUSA machine which is used to cut the liver into two. It uh, not only cuts the liver, but it, is, uh, it keeps the uh, field bloodless and uh, reduces the possibility of need for tr uh, transfusion in donor. So this is how uh, it looks and then it cuts the liver into two. The livers are, uh, liver is in two pieces and uh, uh, there is no bleeding. Then the argon beam coagulation is used to take care of the hemostasis on the cut surface. Similarly, harmonic scalpel is used to divide the liver. The cell saver is to uh, uh, retrieve the bleeding part and use the same blood again for the patient and hence needing the uh, blood from somebody else and hence reducing the possibility of transmission of the disease. The venovenous bypass pump now less commonly used reduces the possibility of uh, hemodynamic instability. Similarly, uh, Dr. Bavin will agree with me here who is a transplant anesthetist that this rapid level transfusion makes the life of the anesthetist very easy. It can transfuse several liters of warm fluid rapidly into the body whenever there is a sudden uh, uh, loss of the uh, fluid. Similarly, we need to monitor the coagulation profile during surgery so for that these different equipments like a thromboelastogram and the prothrombin time machine and all this is used. For the microvascular surgery, specially designed microscopes are used and uh, these are the various monitors, bear huggers to take care of the uh, uh, temperature of the patient in the post-operative period. Similarly, whenever there is associated liver uh, kidney dysfunction, you have to use uh, something like CRRT, which is a highly specialized uh, renal replacement therapy. In acute liver failure, whenever there is uh, 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 the patient is waiting for transplant or you are waiting for the recovery of the patient, you have to support the patient and this is known as the albumin dialysis, not commonly available, but it is a very uh, significant improvement in the technology, you can say. Similarly, you need various blood products and blood component therapies from blood bank and where also the technological improvement has made things very easy. Similarly, immunology and the HLA-PCR immunology have made the uh, uh, renal transplant easy. Intraoperative ultrasound at the end of the transplant helps you check that all the vessels you have joined are satisfactory. If necessary, you can make some corrections and uh, be satisfied and have a good night's sleep. 
So this, this many people are needed to take care of one transplant. And these are few successful transplant candidates, making it obvious that how the technology improves the survival. All these people would have died in next two to three months otherwise. So with this, I would conclude that with the use of latest technology, the transplant surgery has not become common, but it is now quick, safe, and durable. Thank you very much.